to be knocked out by one of the most enjoyable games on the Dreamcast, ready to rumble boxing. Instead of trying to create a boxing simulation, Ready to Rumble doesn't take itself too seriously, providing simple-to-use controls which allow your fighter to get straight into the action. And what a lineup of fighters! Furious Faz and Big Willie Johnson are bound to win a few fans, but Cybernet's favourite has to be the incredible Afro Thunder, whose height advantage is due solely to his hair. As well as simple hooks, jabs and uppercuts, each fighter has a punishing rumble technique which can be activated after you've landed enough blows, resulting in a devastating assault. Enter the championship and you'll be given the opportunity to train your chosen boxer in a number of original ways. These include simple tests of memory and timing and even an Umjamalami style sub game. Ready, Possessing awesome graphics and a bizarre sense of humor, Ready to Rumble Boxing is a massively entertaining title and video game pugilism at its very best. <laughs> From ringside to mountainside now as we hit the slopes with the Dreamcast flagship snowboarding title, Snow Surfers. Once you've picked your coolest dude, costume and board, you can grab some air either on an alpine free race where you speed race other snowboarders against the clock or the super pipe where you attempt to outstunt your competitors or match race where you must battle your friends to be the first across the finish line. The gameplay is smooth and fluid and the sensation of speed as you hurtle down those mountain passes is superb. With beautiful scenery and long, well-designed levels, there's always something to look out for, whether it's falling boulders in a secret underground cavern, or sheep out for an afternoon stroll. Unfortunately, there's nothing new here. Snow Surfers is more a refinement than a revolution, and we expected more from the Dreamcast. Come on, what are you doing? Now it's time for our chart of the best-selling PC games from around the world. The force is strong with this one, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace is still going well at 10. Anyone who's ever wanted to fly should enjoy Microsoft's Flight Simulator in ninth position. More Flight Simulation at 8, but far, far, far away. X Beyond the Frontier battles at the other side of the galaxy. As does the epic space combat game Homeworld, which is this week's number 7. Back down to earth now with the complexities of football boardroom politics. Championship Manager 3 is at 6. Jump into a getaway car and race back to the 1970s. The all-action driver is at 5. Our fourth best-selling PC game gives you control of an elite anti-terrorist squad in Tom Clancy's Rogue Spear. There's daring driving in a dangerous city at three with the long-awaited sequel GTA 2. The Brotherhood of Nod and the Global Defense Initiative continue their battle into the future. Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun is at two. But the strategy goes back to the Age of Kings at the top of our chart. Age of Empires 2 is our number one. If you enjoy crunching tackles, scoring goals and playing the football hero, then take a look at this. Michael Owen's Worldwide Soccer 2000 on the N64, a game with a huge title and an even bigger list of teams. With 200 sides to choose from, including domestic and international teams, the game certainly has enough depth, especially when you add the six different playing modes. However, once you get on the pitch and start playing, the game soon begins to disappoint. The graphics appear rather bland and the animation can often seem too slow. This of course affects the gameplay. Although you can control your player well whilst on the ball, timing those all-important slide tackles can become tricky and frustrating. That's an excellent forward pass. Great challenge. 
Although there isn't one particularly awful feature, Michael Owen's Worldwide Soccer 2000 certainly can't stand up to the leading football games. And speaking of which... It's now 1-0. Here's an exclusive look at ISS Pro Evolution on the PlayStation, a game that's set to become one of the greatest football sims ever. Sequel to the hugely successful ISS Pro, it promises to deliver the most realistic action ever seen. How? Well, the designers seem to have studied the beautiful game in some detail. You play with your feet in real football, and you can't always control like how you want to be. And we try to kind of express that in the game. So it's not just pass, 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 shoot. It's more of sometimes luck and sometimes more courage to pass the defense or to go dribble through the defense and that kind of thing. So it'll be real realistic and very fun to play. Together with the enhanced gameplay, ISS Evolution promises to have even better animation than before. And as you can see from their close ball control, it certainly seems to be heading in the right direction. Together with a four-player mode and an option that allows you to control the speed of the game, ISS Pro Evolution should easily surpass its fantastic predecessor. Look out for the review soon. Multimedia titles are a great source of information. We found a couple that aim not only to improve your knowledge, but your sports skills too. The first is Easy Pool and Snooker. Not a catchy title, but this disc aims to teach you how to become a king of the green bays with hands-on instructions by an expert. The professional shows you all the basic pool and snooker techniques from how to hold the cue and forming the correct bridge with your hand to how to control the ball and make it do exactly what you want. So if you want to know how to roll the ball on, stun it on the spot or perform the tricky screw back, you'll soon become a master. That is hitting below the center on the white ball. Experienced players will be interested to find the details on different styles of games to play, including poker pool, but most will simply want to improve their skills, and with this disc, they'll be well on their way. That's English. Easy Tennis is from the same company, but instead of a games room hustler as your guide, you have the friendly, if slightly over-enthusiastic, David and Lieber. One of my students. You can find out about the history of tennis and there's even a guide to tennis etiquette that advises players not to keep opponents waiting when picking up their balls. After a brief introduction, David and Lieber then take you through a series of strange, if not exhausting, warm-up exercises that wouldn't look out of place in an Irish dancing competition. Then the instructor advises you on the best types of grips to use during the game before getting down to the serious business of how to play shots and tactics. If you've ever fancied having your own tennis coach, David and Lieber are eager to show you everything. If their enthusiasm doesn't annoy you, give them a chance. Some fancy stuff too? Wow, that sounds really exciting. Solid Snake fans who finished Metal Gear Solid will be happy to hear that their favorite super spy is back in Metal Gear Solid Special Missions on the PlayStation. This is not a sequel to Snake's last adventure, but rather an add-on disc, meaning you'll need a copy of the original to play it. The game is made up of literally hundreds of virtual reality assignments, which will test your sneaking abilities, your lateral thinking, and your weapon skills. As you complete missions, more will open up for you, including a bizarre photography stage. There's even a set of mystery levels where you have to track down a suspect. The culprit of this crime has broken his glasses. I wonder who it could be. But best of all are the all-too-brief ninja levels where you get to take control of the legendary Grey Fox. 
The main problem with Metal Gear Solid's special missions is that Metal Gear fans will already have the necessary skills to complete the game quickly. But despite its limited lifespan, this is still a hugely enjoyable title, and with some brilliant bonuses revealed at the very end, there's more than enough to keep you entertained. Good with okay, time for our competition now, so grab a pen. This week's prize is a Nintendo 64 and a copy of Rayman 2 to play on it. So here's your chance to bounce into action with this humorous superhero and practice your coolest moves. To win this prize, just call our number and answer this question. What is used to hit the ball in a game of tennis? Is it A, a rock, B, a rolling pin, or C, a racket? If you think you know, call 0660 111333. Please dial carefully and don't forget to ask permission from the person who pays the telephone bill first. We'll put up the question and number again at the end of today's show, so get dialing and good luck. Coming up, we fly sky high on a bike, go mobile with telecommunications, and quake in our gaming boots. And tell us what you want. Starting. What are you doing? I am experiencing an unfamiliar sense of motivation. Your sci-fi universe is now online. Welcome back to part two of Cybernet. Making a successful conversion from PC to console has always been difficult. Often done cheaply, the games produced rarely live up to the originals, with poor graphics or playability. But now, making a pleasant change to the rule comes Quake 2 on the PlayStation, one of the best conversions we've ever played. Unlike most first-person action games on the PlayStation, controlling your character is a pleasure. Not only is he fast and maneuverable, by using the analog controller you can aim accurately and quickly. This instantly makes the game more playable and therefore more fun. Add to that the fantastic weaponry and some highly intelligent enemies and you're left with an immensely entertaining adventure. Even the multiplayer mode has been carefully thought out. With no speed loss, two to four players can blast away happily in 12 specially designed levels. Whilst not as good as the PC version, Quake 2 on the PlayStation is an instant success. And with such a good multiplayer option, it should give you months of enjoyment. Whilst Quake 2 is certainly good news for PlayStation owners, South Park is most definitely bad. Unlike the TV series, the games have so far been disappointing, and this latest conversion hasn't been improved at all. Controlling one of the four main characters, you must protect your town from various evil forces, including mad robots, aliens, and literally hundreds of turkeys. To aid you, you have a host of bizarre weaponry, ranging from the toilet plungers to devastating Terrence and Philip dolls. Unfortunately, that's about as imaginative as the game gets. The levels are unbelievably dull, the gameplay is repetitive, and the graphics look decidedly dated. In fact, the only slightly enjoyable feature is the multiplayer mode, where you can use all those weird weapons against your friends. However, even this becomes boring after a while, making South Park one game you should definitely avoid.
internet is constantly creating new ways to communicate. Soon, you'll no longer have to sit at a computer to access the latest information. Instead, users will be able to log on with their mobile phones, thanks to a new software standard called WAP, or Wireless Application Protocol. WAP makes mobile phones much more efficient at sending and receiving data and defines how that information will be displayed on telephone screens. We believe WAP will be increasingly important in the competition among the consumers. Uh, today, we start seeing it in, in the high-end products. Over time, we believe that WAP functionality will be available in low-end products as well. With WAP software also appearing in handheld computers, men in suits are starting to get excited. I'm excited. I think data is the way to go for cellular. And we're going to open up a whole new spectrum of services for consumers. As well as sending information to telephones, the Internet is also able to simplify our regular methods of communication. You can now have a single number for all your telephones, faxes, emails and mobile phones. Using a service such as Unified Messaging, you can choose how you wish to collect these messages. For example, you can have all your faxes and telephone messages sent to your email, or you can have a computer phone you up and read your emails to you. The internet will also let you communicate when you're surfing the web. Using an instant messaging service such as ICQ, you'll be alerted whenever your friends are online, and you can then chat to them instantly without having to visit a chat room. thanks to the internet there are now more ways to communicate than ever before all you need to do is find someone who's willing to talk to you can you pat yourself on the head whilst rubbing your stomach with a circular motion our furry friend Max is making a return in Max and the Pirates well then you're healthy now, well, just a few more adjustments and a sand from trousers removing machine will be finished. This brand new CD-ROM sees Max in fine form, spending his summer holiday relaxing with Uncle Pong on the sunny Jivery coast. The piece is shattered when Captain Spinnaker Ears arrives. He asks Max to join his crew aboard the ship, the Santa Loose Tooth, to look for parts of the captain's mysterious pirate machine. Welcome on board the Santa Loose Tooth. On board, Max meets Nina, the captain's daughter, and so begins a thrilling new adventure. As with other Max titles, clicking on objects will make the hand-painted backgrounds come to life. An octopus will clean the deck, or a fat fish will have an aching tooth removed. OK, you're free to go. And don't forget to brush your teeth. Once your mystery pirate machine is complete, you can switch it on. But we're not going to spoil the fun by telling you what happens. Oh, it's you, Tintoretto. I thought it was an anchor on the floor. As well as collecting parts for the machine, Max can play some tuneful musical barrels. Take it away, Max. Young children and young-minded adults will find Max and the Pirates an enjoyable experience. I wonder if we'll see Max again. <sighs> Now this is the door to my cabin. Feel free to have a look around. OK, get ready to scribble, because we've got a frighteningly good cheat for System Shock 2 on the PC. During normal gameplay, hold Shift and press the semicolon key. Then type F U. M, M, O, N, space, O, B, J. Now you can enter the correct name of any item in the game to add it to your inventory. For instance, try entering laser pistol. That's L, A, S, E, R, space, P, I, S, T, O, L. The item will now appear at your feet. Just grab it and it's yours. Or if you'd like to get a fusion cannon, just enter F, U S I O N space C A N N O N. And if toting all those weapons about makes you peckish, try entering C H I P 
S for quit nibble. Speed things up now with a look at two of the latest bike racing games to hit your screen. Ricky Carmichael is probably a name many of you won't recognize, but the American motocross champion has a great new game for the PlayStation called Championship Motocross. We really like this game because it's frighteningly fast and your motorcycle is extremely responsive. Controlling your bike as you race over the jumps is essential if you want a good landing and more speed. Being able to pull a few tricks makes you look cool too, except when you get the balance of your machine wrong and end up in the mud. After a while, this form of racing may become tedious for some, but there is an exciting two-player option to keep you amused. Championship Motocross is the best dirt bike game for the PlayStation and will keep you happily entertained if you want to change from four-wheel racers. Edgar Tarantaras is apparently famous for his wild stunts in the world of motocross. How appropriate then that he now has a crazy game for the PC called Extreme Biker. Basically, this isn't your average bike game. Strange tracks and the ability to pull hundreds of different stunts make this more than just a good-looking racer. Due to a fantastic 3D environment, it's possible to flip your bike in any direction. You can then watch the action unfold thanks to a comprehensive replay camera. Extreme Biker has separate physics models for both the machine and the rider. This means that tricks can look quite spectacular and crashes appear painfully realistic. In terms of its handling, the game has several options that will help you configure your machine for better control. Whether you want a quick race or complete freedom to pull outrageous stunts, the choice is yours. But be careful, the bike is so responsive both on the ground and in the air that it'll take a lot of practice. Extreme Biker is a great game with a lot of depth. With its varied interactive courses and appealing gameplay, this is another fine bike game for PC owners. So cheer up! That's it from us. We're out of here, but we'll be back again soon. Until we return, why not try our competition to win a console? Good luck!